Here's how I went from a 6 in GCSE biology to an 8 in A-level biology. And I was only 4% off an A-star, by the way. I know it would sound better if I went from 6 to A-star, but I guess 6 to A is more realistic because I didn't get the A-star. So in the video, I'm going to run through what I did during GCSE to get the 6 and why that wasn't right. And I'm also going to tell you what I did in year 13, what I did differently during the whole of college and how that helped me get the A. I'm going to run through how I stayed organised, how I revised and all my old notes. So let's start off with GCSE year. This is year 10 and year 11. Year 10, I am clueless. Biology gave me a headache. Every biology lesson would just give me a headache. Like high school was just not a fun time. We'll have le lesson after lesson after lesson. It would just give me a headache. Imagine English and then biology. Like, bro, I hated that day. So because of that, I did not pay attention at all in class. I was in set two. Year 11 and year uh, 10, I was in set two for biology. So a lot of my friends were there. And I will just like mess around with them. A whole biology lesson for me was just get past this hour. It was just one of the slowest hours of the day. All I knew was that eventually at the end of year 11, I'm going to have to do GCSE. I didn't know about its importance for dentistry. I didn't know about its importance for me to get in college. All I knew is that I have to do a biology GCSE and biology is a really important science. So in year 10, I get through the year somehow. I mean, I pass. I'm still doing higher triple science. In our school, if you didn't do well enough, they'll literally uh, kick you off of triple science. They'll kick you off of higher and they'll literally put you on foundation uh, uh, combined science. So we did our year 11 marks. So this is like January, December time. I think this is before Christmas. We did our marks and we got our results after Christmas. And I got a five in GCSE biology. Now five is a pass. It's decent, but it's nowhere near what an aspiring dental or medical student should be getting. And in year 11, I had the idea of like, yeah, I do want to do something like dentistry. I did like maths. I was maybe thinking of doing something math related, but dentistry was an option. I obviously wanted better than a five, but it was, it was at this point, I literally took anything for biology. It's just like, I just don't like the subject. Thing is, I did GCSE PE as well, and the theory side of PE was similar to biology. Both of them, I did get the same grade in both of them. Maybe because I didn't understand either of them, because I found the theory part of PE quite hard. Maybe because I just didn't pay attention to it because it reminded me of biology. But with GCSEs, my revision method was literally like a month before the exam, free science lessons, just watch his videos without paying that much attention to it. I barely did any practice questions leading up to my GCSE. And this resulted in me getting a six. Now, a six is obviously not bad. I got a B in biology, which is really good, actually. But to even do a subject in college, a lot of the time you need a seven. And I was planning on doing biology in college. But I had two options. I had Loretto and Trinity in Manchester, if you know where they are. Those are the two colleges that I got accepted in. I decided to go ahead with the sixth one of my high school, Trinity. So I somehow got into doing biology at college, but my GCSEs weren't that great because I didn't pay attention. I didn't know how to revise and it was just a headache. Now, the thing is, when I started year 12, I told myself I am going to work from the start. If I want to get into dentistry, I need to smash these A-levels. And the only way I'm going to smash them is if I work from the start. And that's what I did. So we started school. I remember this quite clearly. We started year 12 on a Wednesday. So Wednesday was our induction. Thursday, we had our first lessons. Thursday, I remember we had a biology class which was on proteins. Now, if you do A-level biology, you know that protein is probably the easiest topic out of all. But when we did it at the start, I thought I found it like the hardest thing ever. I did not understand it at all. Now, the same day on first Thursday afternoon, I had football. So usually if this was GCSE day, I'll come home, chill, bam, out my house, football, home, sleep, school tomorrow. No revision. Instead, what I did was when I went home, I looked over the PowerPoint that we had that day. I actually recapped what we learned and tried to understand it. And I understood it. It became so easy for me. When I did that, I realised this is exactly what I have to do every day. So I went to football knowing biology. I realised that to do well, I need to recap everything the day that it's taught, just so it stays fresh in my head. What I did next was make a revision schedule. So this was setting up the times exactly. So I, I, so I got my school timetable and I looked at what how much freedom I want to have that's not revision. And I made myself a revision schedule. You can see these revision schedules on my TikTok or on my YouTube. I'll, I'll leave the A-level revision schedule on screen right here. You can see it. So what these schedules determined was what subjects I revised every day. What these what this schedule determined was what subjects I was going to revise the day I went home. So I'll literally have maths, bio, chem or whatever. I'll know what I'm revising at home. What I'm going to do in my free periods. How much time I'm going to have off. I made sure to give myself a rest day because you really do need a rest day when you're revising every day. You just can't hack it. You just need a day off to just not deep, not think about exams. So the two things I knew when I started my revision journey was I have this schedule that I need to follow and every day I need to recap what I've taught. Now, the main thing was actually learning how to revise because obviously in GCSEs, I did not know how to revise. And what I did was I went to YouTube to find YouTube channels that teach biology. And it was literally like finding gold. I found these channels and I was like, they literally teach what my teacher taught me in an hour in 10 minutes. Like in a 10 minute video, it covers everything I need to know. 
So I was like, you know what, I'm going to watch this YouTube video, make notes on it and read over the PowerPoint we had in lesson. In about an hour, I would have learned the whole lesson. And that's what it, it took about an hour for each subject. Miss Estrich and A-Level Biology Help. These are channels I use to just teach me biology. A-Level Biology Help was good because she like did questions at the end of it as well. So you could link what you learned, what she just taught you to questions and you could see how she was answering the questions. So what we got was like printouts of the PowerPoint every session. So it would be like each slide is like half a, half a page. And this is obviously each slide that the teacher was teaching us that day. And I'll just make notes on it. Like throughout the lesson, I'll make notes on what she says, what we need to do and whatever. And I'll come home and this is the thing that I'll read off. This is the lesson we had that day. So you can see this is a photosynthesis. We had photosynthesis and we've used to finish off with questions. Now the thing I did with this was I'll pretty much memorize it, like see how much of it I can remember, see how much of it I learned. And after that, I'll blurt it all out on a piece of paper. I'll try to leave it on one page. Obviously this one's two pages. It was quite a big lecture. But yeah, I'll literally write everything out in a like, quite simplified way. So it's, instead of having six pages, whatever this is, it'll just be one page. And I'll do this multiple times. Whenever I have time and it's my biology revision, I'll be like, okay, let me just read over it and then blur everything I can remember. So this is how I would blur. This is how blurting works. It was so satisfying when I used to write it down and I used to get it all correct. But that was pretty much my revision method on lock. Now, something that I did that my friends didn't do was utilize my free periods. I used to have, free two, I used to have two free periods a day because I was only doing three A-levels and I used to spend one of them usually doing biology because biology was my weakest subject. But what I would usually cover in the free period would be reading over this PowerPoint and uh, blurting on a piece of paper. So literally be read this and blurt. That would usually take me about 45 minutes to an hour because it's once it's in your head, it's not that long to blurt. Sometimes it'll take me like 15 minutes if I knew it inside out. But that was the method I used to actually remember the content and then obviously we had, had to go do questions as well. Now in college, we also used to do exams every two weeks for every subject. So biology, every fortnight we'll have a little checkup, which they used to be called checkups, it was just a little exam. So this one was like osmosis, transport across membranes, respiration, it was them topics. And I got 73%. So this is something that I actually revised for across the weekend. So I'll set aside my biology revision across the weekend, we'll be revising for this exam that I have coming up in school. So for example, uh, synapses, describe the role of calcium ions and ATP in the con contraction of myofibril. Five marks, uh, and I think I got all five marks. It'll just be like, identify A, B, and C. So these are like past paper questions. A lot of time it would be past paper questions, and a lot of time it wouldn't be past paper questions. Depends, sometimes the teachers write their own questions. But yeah, we um, just bear questions that help me test what I already knew. Now these checkups did actually get very tiring eventually. Like every two weeks having to revise for it, it just wasn't nice because the other week I'll have to do maths and chemistry as well. But it was a good way to test my knowledge. And the, wor the worst score I actually got in one of these tests was 50%. 27 out of 54. That's the worst score I've got throughout the whole two years of college. So if you use this method, you'll never get below 50%, hopefully. The topics I flopped on in this exam were effect of temperature and pH on enzymes, controlling blood glucose and inhibitors, and diabetes treatment. Those are the three topics that dropped my mark on this exam. But the thing is, if your school doesn't do exams a week, it's fine. You can literally just do past paper questions yourself on one of the weekends. This way you test your knowledge and make sure you just do it realistically. I know you want to give yourself the highest score, but really the only person who's losing when you do that is you. Now I'm going to talk about how I stayed organized in college. If you couldn't tell, we used these file things. So I had one for year 12 biology and one for year 13 biology. As you can see, this is all year 13 biology. What I would do is, uh, as I said, the questions that we did, so the, the checkups, the exams we did, I'll put them at the start. So if you do any past paper question or anything, you can just leave out the start of the folder. And then after that, I'll have my, all my PowerPoints and all my blurting, whatever I was like, all the stuff I wrote on a piece of paper. So I have the actual PowerPoint printed off and my blurting next to it. Now, the reason I split this into two was because we had two teachers. So I'll split it for what one teacher taught and what the second teacher taught. You could do this into different topics, into, I don't know if you've got chemistry, like organic, inorganic, stuff like that. So that's what I mean. You can just divide it up. Because I was so organized, I knew at all times where all my revision was. So I didn't have to go rewrite notes. I don't have to do anything. I had access to it at all times. You can see it was quite far. But yeah, I mean, it was so organized that I have access to it today. I have access to all my notes right now. I could probably sell some of these. Hey, if you want it, let me know. Study pay Instagram. But outside of that, something else I did differently was asking questions in class. I don't care if you're the smartest person in the world. You don't know everything ask it doesn't matter if it's a stupid question or not just ask the teacher the teacher knows it all so just ask them for help my my friends would literally tell me 
you're getting these you're getting the highest grades in class but you're asking questions like some of the stupidest questions and like that's why i'm getting some of the highest grades because i don't understand everything and i need help understanding it and i need it broken down into little pieces and i'll ask questions about every single little piece and it's okay don't feel embarrassed to do that in class what you'll realize in college is that the people there are actually, actually want to learn like in high school i used to be embarrassed to ask questions in college in lesson people actually want to learn they want to do well so a lot of the time the question you're asking someone else has the same question as well it's fine just ask the question asking questions genuinely i think it up my grade so much up my score so much, up my understanding so much so that is how i went from a six to an eight in a level biology it is a bit annoying that i didn't get a star but hey uh, i wasn't the best at a biology i can put my hands up and say that i wasn't the best at biology i worked hard enough and i worked efficiently to get there and you can do the same so in a year's time two years time when you get that a in biology come back to this video come back to study play and let me know you smashed your exam but anyway thanks for watching this hopefully everything goes well and make sure you subscribe, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, at Studyplate, and watch my other videos.